so many stories. Um, we'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it to my brother because he um, he put this together just this morning. <laughs> so I, could, uh, I told him about it a few days ago, but he's fishing in uh, uh, Wyoming right now, and uh, uh, he's been he's been quite busy. Um, but uh, my brother and I are very close, and Black Anchor has been a lot of the glue that pulled us together as kids. He's a year and a half older. He lives in Maine, and uh, if you ever want to learn fly fishing, he's one of the best there is. So, so I'm going to read some of his words, or all of the words that he set down, um, and and they are uh, about my grandmother and the gardens and, and Emmy's acres. So Emmy Smith Gardens Remembrance, Holly Lord, June 29th. 1997. I was in Emmy's kitchen one morning at her house in town. At 88 years old, she was still cooking me breakfast. She asked me how the recent Blackacre board meeting had gone. I told her that I was sad because the 100 acres that abutted Blackacre was going to be subdivided. Yes, there were going to be lots of houses right here. Emmy was horrified. A couple of days later, she said, I'd like you to drive me to the bank tomorrow. I had no idea why. The bank was high in a downtown tower, and we strode into a central room with a grand wooden table, escorted by four men in fancy dark suits. I think you can picture that. <laughs> Emmy rolled out a big blueprint of this property on the table and told them about what a subdivision here would do to the integrity of the Blackacre State Nature Preserve. Now, the men at the table were horrified. This charming lady, whom they all loved, who lit up every room she ever walked into, was about to give away half of her remaining money. And it was about to fly out the window, out from their bottom line. They gently tried to talk her out of it. Can I afford to do this? There was a reluctant yes. She slapped her hand down on the table and said, then I'm going to do it. Blackacre board members Pete Kerbin and Steve Lannert were instrumental in the land's acquisition. In fact, this gravel drive used to be called Lannert Lane. When Emmy and my grandfather lived here, in her own garden, uh, well, her, her own garden was right by the driveway, just catty corner to the house on your right as you're approaching the house, just before the fence that uh, has the, the near yard on the left. And it continued. It's quite a big garden. In, she loved growing and cooking her own food. She'd send me out from the kitchen with a big bowl to pick peas, zucchini, or tomatoes for dinner. I'd pick five peas and eat one, pick five peas and eat one. And we might have a steak that came from one of the Angus cattle that grazed here. This cultured lady who brought chamber music to Louisville hosted many of the world's most famous musicians here at Black Acre and help preserve Locust Grove in perpetuity, loved making food for her family and friends. I can still taste her steamed okra, her zucchini and onions, and her fried green tomatoes. I can too. In my teenage years, I remember warm weekend days in the summer when my grandparents' friends, Mary and Ed Jackson, would come out from the highlands in town. They were city lawyers, now in the country for the day, to renew their souls with my grandparents. Ed would take me out fishing in one of the ponds. Jackson's Pond is named for it. While Mary and Emmy would spend their time in the garden together in their big straw hats. Mary was brilliant, and she loved gardening. But living in town meant she had no space for it. 
at dinners on the side porch, which now is open, but it was a screen porch back then, right next to the kitchen. Ed and I would beam from our fishing together, but Mary and Emmy seemed to have a special peace about them, one that only hands in the soil can bring. Someone that's disappeared from me, I'm sorry. But it, I remember this, it was just a sentence. When Emmy was in her 90s, she would often tell my brother, um, would you drive me out to Blackacre tomorrow so I can see the gardens? We'd park at the entrance. She in her cotton sundress and beloved straw hat on a sunny day, and she'd slowly stroll the garden rows with her cane, admiring everything. When we encountered a gardener, she'd say, my goodness, aren't those sunflowers having a glorious time? Or are your tomatoes? Just, they're marvelous. She especially loved seeing people grow food, as she had done in her own garden a few hundred yards from here. <laughs> Emmy and my grandfather could see 50 years into the future. They were visionaries. In Emmy's words, it was not to save the historic houses that we have donated to Blackacre. Houses are not sacred. It is the land that is sacred. The land can never be restored after bulldozers and blacktop. I can well imagine that in 50 years, that what urban children would need most to see is what our, not what our museums would hold, but what our farmland looks like. She told me many times that nothing she had done in her life made her as happy as preserving this land. <laughs> Thank you.